All right, good day everyone. So welcome back to my YouTube channel, channel Castilian Vlogs. Today we will be talking about t test for amine. So before we are using, we were using traditional method. At this point of time, uh, we will be using the probability value method or the p value method. So let us have first the t test for amine using the p value. Right, so the p-value for a t-test can be found by using table f. So this is our table f. So however, specific values for a t-test cannot be obtained from the table since only selected values of alpha, such as 0 0.01, 0 0.05, are given to find the specific values for t-test. You would need to have a table similar to the table e, for each uh, degree of freedom. Since this is not practical, only the intervals can be found for the p-value. So what we're going to look here is the interval only because we cannot get the exact when, you're, when we are using the table. So interval lang siya. Okay, so let us have first this condition. So we have here find the p-value when the t-test value is 2.056, the sample size is 11, and the test is right tail. So the given is the t-test value for number one is 2.056, and sample size of n is equal to 11. Since we're looking for the closest value to 2.056, so 2.056, that is, with a degrees of freedom of 10. So the df is equal to n minus 1. So therefore, 11 minus 1 is equal to 10. So we're going to look here in the table. That is 10. And closer to 2.056 is between this one. 1.812 and 2.228. So therefore, the interval is between or it falls between this one 1.812 and 2.228 so the interval that we're going to get here is uh, it falls between 1.812 and 2.228 so since this is a right tail test we'll have to look at uh, now labeled one tail so uh, it has a one tail so this is a right tail test this is we're looking for the one tail and find the two values corresponding to 1.812 and 22.8 they are this one 0 0.05 and 0 0.025 respectively then after that one the p value that contain this interval is so we have here the p is greater oh no the p is greater than 0 0.025 but lesser than 0 0.05 okay this would be the p value again this is the p value is greater than here between p value is greater than uh, 0 0.025 but lesser than 0 0.05 if this means that the p-value is between 0.025 and 0.05. If the alpha were 0.05, if our alpha, we will consider that that alpha is equal to 0.05, we you would reject the null hypothesis since the p-value is lesser than the alpha. But the, the p-value is between only this interval. If we had considered that the alpha is 0.05, we have to reject the null hypothesis. But if the p-value of the given data, let us assume that the p-value is alpha is 0.01, so you would not reject the null hypothesis because p is greater than, than the alpha. So that is p is, or the, the p-value is greater than this, this p-value is greater than the alpha. If that is greater than the alpha, you would not reject the null hypothesis. Let's start. Let's have number two. In number two, find the probability when the t-test value is 2.983. 
the sample size is 6, and the test value is 2 tail. So remember, there are two here. Confidence interval first is the one tail and the two tail. So if that is told, you're told to use the two tail test. So therefore, our test value is equal to 2.983 and our sample size is equal to 6. So therefore, our DF is equal to 5. And that is our DF is equal to 5. We have to look here. The closest value to 2.983. So it falls between this one. 2.983. It falls between 2.571 and 3.365. If there is a degree of freedom. So we are using two tail tests. So we will refer to this one. 0 0.05 and we have also 0 0.02. So therefore, the p-value that we need to get is, the p-value is greater, okay, greater, greater than 0 0.02, but lesser than 0 0.05. So this means that the p-value is between 0 0.2, 0 0.02, and 0 0.05. In this case, the alpha is 0 0.05, the null hypothesis can be rejected since if our alpha is 0 0.05, we would say that the null hypothesis can be rejected since the p-value is lesser than the alpha. If the alpha is 0 0.01, the null hypothesis cannot be rejected because the p-value is greater than 0 0.01. So this one is the free value, which is greater than the alpha, which is 0 0.01. That is how, but the actual value for this one using calculator is 0 0.02. But since we're using table here, we will uh, embrace for the interval. So we will be using the interval. Let's proceed with the problem number two. A physician claims that the jugger's maximal volume oxygen uptake is greater than the average of adults, of all adults. A random sample of 15 joggers has a mean of 40.6 milliliters per kilogram ml slash kg and a standard deviation of 6 ml kg. If the average of all adults is 36.7 ml per kg, is there is enough evidence to support the physician claim at alpha 0.05 and assume that the variable is normally distributed? All right, so the first thing that we're going to do in step one in finding in hypothesis testing is we need to state the hypothesis and identify the claim. So therefore, we could say that our hypothesis error, the null hypothesis is mu is equal to 36.7 okay the average adult of adult 36.7 so it stated that and our alternative hypothesis it stated that okay the alternative is greater than the average of the adults so therefore our alternative hypothesis mu is greater than 36.7 which is our claim basing on this problem, which states that the greater uptake is greater than the average of all adults. And we get step number two. In step number two, we have to compute the test value. So the test value is equal to the mean o minus the mu over S, the standard deviation square root of N. So what is our mean here? The mean is 40.6 okay the mean is 40.6 minus which is the average of the other 36.7 which is the mu over 6 this is the 6 i know this is these the randoms the standard deviation rather the standard deviation is 6 ml per kj over the square root of 15. So if we're going to use and plug in that one in the calculator, the resulting one is 2.517. Right, then after that one, we have to compute for the p-value. What is the p-value? We have to cross in across the table uh, using df. 
and this is we count 14 because it is 15 and minus 1 and the t value of 2.517 and the alpha of 0 0.05 and this one is the right tail or greater than since this is a right tail test so the corresponding in the table 2.517 falls let us have 14 and the corresponding in the table falls in between 214, 2145 and 2.624. Since this is a right details, we are going to consider the one tail test. So this one, okay, this is considered as a one tail test. So therefore, the p value here is the p value is <coughs> greater than 0 0.01, but uh, we have greater than 0 0.01 <coughs> but lesser than the p-value is lesser than 0 0.025. That is the p-value somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.025. So therefore, our step number four is we have to, step number four, we have to compare the p-value in step number four. We have to consider what is the p-value. The p-value is this is the interval of the p-value. So therefore, we have to reject the null hypothesis since since the p-value is lesser than 0 0.05. Okay, that is the because the p-value is lesser than. Because the B value is within the interval only of 0.01 and 0.025. So reject the null hypothesis. And since the P value is lesser than 0.05. Since our claim is H1 and we reject the null hypothesis. In step number five, in step number five, we would state first that there is enough evidence to support the claim that the joggers that the joggers maximal volume oxygen uptake is greater than 36.7 ml per kg okay that's it for step number five so i hope you get this point that is example number two and how to find the p-value again the p-value when you're when you're going to use a table uh it is just an interval between uh the closest value of the t and that is referring to our table F, that is a T distribution. So for your activity class, we have to answer this, try this. We have two numbers here, all about the doctor's doctor visits and the number of jobs. So try this one at home and submit that one during our class before our uh, the, before the class starts. All right, thank you so much for listening and God bless everyone.